Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable. And uh, let me write on the protocols already established. Colleagues, I think it's uh, important. I'll not speak much, but I hope it's important that we appreciate where we are coming from as Parliament. Of late, I think you've observed number one, for the first time we saw a quorum collapsing in the House, in Parliament. We as opposition members of Parliament have tried, first of all, to rely on the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia that is supreme law of the land. But our colleagues from the executive are not serious. Today, again, temporarily the column had collapsed. Who was not in the House? It's members from the executive. But the blame game is placed on us. I hope people are taking note. I had an opportunity today to ask our honor the Vice President a question. If Atosha's interest in that company that is mining Sujilat, on the floor of the house, she refused to, to declare whether she has interest or not. Because people have been writing stories that the Vice President is involved in this Sujilat mineral. And today the Vice President failed to give us a clear cut answer. And then you wonder, where is the fight against corruption? If I'm, I've got interest in a particular business, I'll declare interest. I will not shy away to say, um, I've got interest. But the vice president today failed to give us a concrete answer. Instead, I was delivering a message to her this morning that the people in Lumezi are saying, as you all come, the vice president of the United States, she should not come to Zambia to tell us about LGBTs and human rights. We know what constitutes our rights, and we know where our rights end. She says, no, we are a Christian nation. A Christian nation, yet the prayer in the National Assembly has no Jesus to eat anyway. So you wonder to say, where are, where are we as a country? Where are we going? Sujilait, yesterday we saw videos. There was a tribal talk to it that some tribes were being released transferred based on their tribal lines. And the moment the video went viral, we saw people being released on police point. Today, we are seeing videos of people apologizing. Mm. Honestly, where is the country heading? And when we speak in parliament, we are told this is not important. What is it that qualifies to be important? We are told that it should be life-threatening. Yet our own standing orders that I don't believe in because I'm a strong believer of constitutionalism do not talk of life and death. It does not talk about life and death. I've read through all, uh, all the standing orders. There's nowhere why it says something to be important should be life threatening. So we, I wonder to say, are these standing orders interpreted differently by we members or it's deliberate? Today, the second deputy speaker said this is not a banana republic. He has a constituency to represent. He's an ordinary member of parliament like any one of us. Like any one of us. It's just a privilege that has been bestowed upon him to be the second deputy speaker of parliament. And it's not a guarantee that he will come back as a deputy speaker. The chances are extremely slim. That's a fact. It's a fact I'm stating here. It's a privilege that he should have saved the country through parliament diligently and above reproach. The column collapsing just shows that members have lost confidence. Taking advantage uh, of the press, leader of opposition, I must say, we the independents are the minority in the house. I'm disappointed with the Patriotic Front members. By now, they should have moved an impeachment motion because I've got the numbers for that motion to be tabled on the floor of the House. We cannot continue playing public relations just because he's a deputy speaker, harassing members with impunity. Leader of opposition, you've got a magnanimous task to make a sign and let us table the impeachment motion. Our rights are enshrined in the Constitution, and we shall not accept an individual who has a constituent like any one of us to temper with our rights that are clearly enshrined in the Constitution. This we must do with no apologies to anyone who got the country to protect.
The other two have no constituencies. For now, I want to deal with someone who is an elected member, like any one of us. Yesterday, there was a ministerial statement on the fertilizer scandal. We'll be communicating to you, the press, some few members in the next 48 hours or less. We'll communicate in good time. We are going to go to nitrogen chemicals of Zambia in Kafiwe. From there, we shall drive to United Capital Fertilizer. To confirm, the minister said United Capital Fertilizer has 50,000 metric tons of fertilizer in stock. And nitrogen chemicals of Zambia has 10,000 metric tons of stock. Now, here is the catch. There is what you call manufacturing, meaning you've got the raw materials. And there is what you call blending. We want to confirm if these two firms are blending the fertilizer or indeed the manufacturing. Number two, we want to establish if indeed there are the metric terms that the minister mentioned on the floor of the house. We are convinced beyond all reasonable doubt that these two firms do not have the tonnages that the minister mentioned. This is a stinking deal. It's corruption at play. And we are going to fight for the betterment of this country. No one is going to stand in our way. The minister gave us an olive branch using the floor of the house to go and inspect. And we'll invite you members of the press to escort us so that we establish if indeed we are dealing with angels as they claim to be. So in conclusion, there is no fight against corruption that is taking place. It is cheap talk at play. And we know Next week, Tuesday, if the leader of opposition does not engineer a motion to impeach the second deputy speaker, we shall also declare one leader of opposition. Thank you. <laughs>